Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be discussing the idea of what would actually happen if two galaxies collided and what sort of effects we can actually observe as it happens. Anyway, let's discuss it in more detail and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So in this simulation, you're about to witness two uh, galaxies similar to the Milky Way collide and intermix the material and basically combine into one. Now, this will actually happen to Milky Way in about four-ish billion years when uh, the Andromeda galaxy decides to come close to us and collide with us. Now, there's actually quite a lot of interesting things that will happen here. But one thing that you may expect will definitely not happen, and that is the star collision. Each of those individual particles that you see represents a star, and not a single one will very likely collide at all. The collision chance between a star and another star as galaxies collide is practically zero. Unless the two galaxies involved are extremely large, there's going to be no collisions. Their black holes might collide and merge, but that's really the only type of a collision we might observe here. One interesting thing about this, though, is, of course, the fact that why the collisions don't occur. And they don't occur simply because the stars are just too far away from each other. The amount of space one star takes in comparison to the distance between them is just too insignificant. And in one of the videos that I made about a year and a half ago, I've actually even mathematically showed you the chance for a single star colliding with another star when two galaxies collide. And it was ridiculously small. But anyway, so what will actually happen in terms of the other effects? Now, one thing here to notice is that the shape of the galaxy has been completely changed. And what has now been created is known as an irregular galaxy. And when two large galaxies collide, most of the time they leave these irregular galaxies behind. And these are usually full of nothing but really dim red stars, uh, leftovers of these uh, very, very large collisions. And basically, for the most part, there's no more star creation. These irregular galaxies, for the most part, are sort of dead. There's no more new stars created, just old stars dying. There's a lot of these irregular galaxies out there in the universe. But as you can see, this one here may have actually created a larger uh, spiral galaxy, which actually doesn't happen very often. So it, it can still create a spiral galaxy as well. Now, let's go back for a second and let's look at the simulation again. The first thing that happens when two galaxies collide is that they actually cre create these really, really long tendrils. These long, uh, kind of almost like corridors or hallways of stars and gas and uh, there's one that's been created right here there it is and th these always seem to occur and they actually um, stretch all the way through here and they also stick out on the other side as well and there will be one sticking out from this galaxy as well and these occur because of the tidal forces basically the tidal forces from two galaxies stretch these so so thin and so wide that they always get these long arm-like projections. And these actually have been discovered a long time ago, back in 1941, by a very interesting scientist who did this without any kind of computer simulations. So back then, um, the so-called proto-computational scientist Eric Kohlberg investigated the um, galactic collisions using nothing but the lamps. And he basically placed a bunch of lamps together and observed uh, how they interacted and how much light they um, shone on each other, projected on each other, uh, by moving them around. And so, depending on, on how much light the lamps received, he would move them in certain locations. And basically, he kind of created this, this, using different lamps. So imagine this galaxy represent, was represented with different lamps. So one big lamp here, one here, one here, one here, and so on. And he would actually move them around um, for, you know, several times, several days, and ca calculated the various amounts of lights that they would receive from each other, and the light represented gravity. And because light and gravity have very similar sort of properties, basically they decrease in, uh, in power, 
over a certain amount of distance, he was able to quite accurately predict that these arms would actually form and was also able to predict what would actually happen at the end of the galactic merger. And later on, Eller um, and Jury Toomer did this again using actual computers and were able to show that these so-called tidal tails uh, of ga gas and stars were basically created pretty much every time galaxies collided. So these galaxies will merge, they'll collide, they'll interact with each other, and essentially when they do, they often get ripped apart and lose their shape. But apart from losing the shape, another very important thing happened. So when the galaxy just begins to merge, on the inside it probably has nebula, there's the one right there, they probably have a lot of gas in between the stars, and as this gas and as these nebula approach each other, they actually become very, very active uh, sites of star creation. So as soon as these two galaxies start merging, they'll actually, st they'll actually brighten up. They'll become really bright because the star creation in these galaxies will increase by something like 10 times. And that's because all of this gas suddenly starts mixing and colliding and creating these stars. And essentially these galaxies become very, very active. So active, as a matter of fact, that when they're left um, already combined, and basically when they stop combining, most of this gas will be used up, and so these galaxies kind of remain inactive and practically dead. And during this collision, which usually takes anywhere from a few uh, dozen million years to several hundred million years, something like several billion stars will actually be created. So there will be a lot of a lot of interaction, a lot of new stars will be born. Most of them will actually be very massive, so they won't very they won't live for a very long time, and usually they'll kind of explode and create supernova and then more stars. So there will be a lot of creation and a lot of death of different stars. So uh, at the end of this though, only dying, only cool, and only red dwarfs will probably remain. With some exceptions, of course, with occasional um, brown dwarf, neutron star, and a black hole. So basically the rest of the galaxy here will be a complete mess. But as you can see right here, this process is actually very, very long. It takes quite a long time for two galaxies to merge completely. So right now we're going to start with zero years, and you'll see that it will take up to about 100 million years to, to merge. And this means that we actually haven't really observed any of these. The only reason we know about all of this is, is that because we were able to find uh, various merging galaxies in, in different sort of frames of reference and in, in different times of their merger and we're able to combine them and kind of see how they progress and so here's actually a picture of eight different galaxies and eight different uh times of merger and so for the most part we now think that we kind of understand mergers pretty well although obviously there will be some surprises as well and don't forget that when galaxies merge there is also something invisible going on here and this is the so-called dark matter. Now, maybe I'll actually start a new simulation just to show you how dark matter interacts as well. And here what we'll do is we'll just place two galaxies side by side and the red spots here represent the dark matter. And now if we actually try to accelerate time here, hopefully without crashing our game, you'll see that um, the dark matter will also be interacting and it will also be merging. But because it doesn't really interact with regular matter uh, and because dark matter usually represents up to about 90% of the total mass of the galaxy, it's really the dark matter that will actually at the end establish the final shape of the merging galaxy. So when the merger is complete, it will be up to dark matter to decide what shape will be uh, present and what will actually happen to the actual galaxy at the end. So that's really all I wanted to say in this video and I wanted to kind of demonstrate to you that the galactic mergers are a little bit more complicated than we usually think about them and at the end of the galactic merger between Andromeda and the Milky Way it's very likely that very little will be, will be left behind at least in terms of new stars that might no longer be made after the merger. So the galactic merger between our galaxy and Andromeda will probably end up creating some kind of an irregular galaxy full of nothing but red stars, red dwarfs specifically.
So let's watch what happens here with these two galaxies and the dark matter as it interacts with each other. And basically that's it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. Come back tomorrow to learn something else and share this video with someone who enjoys watching these videos. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.